Hello Helpful Programmer here and in this tutorial we're going to add in collision. Let's go and add in collision to player 1 and player 2 so if the ball collides with the paddles. Going into player1.h let's create a function called hitting the ball. Open close parentheses into a semicolon. Now let's go to the player1.cpp file and define the function hitting the ball. Let's go below movement put in int player1 two colons hitting the ball and close parentheses and do two brackets and don't forget to return zero in here we're going to put all the code for when the player one paddle hits the ball what's going to happen is if it hits it dead center it rebounds at 90 if it hits it above dead centre, it rebounds it at 45, and if it hits it below centre, it's going to rebound it at 135. This is going to give the player opportunity to try and sneak a um, clever shot against the other player. Going back to our project, let's start typing in the code. First off, we want to see if the ball is even colliding with the paddle, so let's write the if statement. If DB Sprite Collision open parentheses and then put in the paddle ID which you have said is player1 which we have defined as player1 so player1 comma and then the target which is the ball ID which we're going to call ball ID so just under player1 define ball ID and let's go to our ball.cpp see what ID we used and as you can see we've used an ID of 4 so let's put in 4, so when we use ball ID it will know that it actually means 4 ball ID, close parentheses and equals to 1 in here we want to do 3 if statements an if statement for seeing if it's going up forward or down so let's type if open parentheses and this is going to be the hardest if statement we're going to code in the whole project. So open parentheses db sprite height of player one close parentheses divided by two so the middle point of player one plus db sprite y of player one is greater so at the moment all we've got is the actual position of player 1 because we've got player 1 position but remember when we load up a sprite the position of it is in the top left hand corner so we need to find the middle so all we're doing is getting this position and adding half of the sprite's height which is here so we just add it from there to there and that gives us the actual middle position and then we can just copy this code again and just change the factors from player 1 to ball so instead of player 1 ball id and db sprite y ball id so all we're doing here see if the center point of player 1's paddle is greater than the center point of the ball let's do two brackets then in here if it is we want to make it rebound at an angle of 45 because what it's saying is if the coordinate of the player is greater than the ball so it needs to rebound at an angle of 45 so let's go into our project and type in db rotate sprite open parentheses ball id comma and 45 close parentheses into a semicolon. Now we can just copy this if statement because all the others are practically like the same checking for the center and everything so we don't need to type it out again and change the greater sign to an equal sign so if it's going the other way so I want it to go down we want it to rebound at an angle of 135 so going back to our project type in 135 and then copy that if statement again and instead of the less than sign put two equal signs so the balls hit the paddle dead center we want it to rotate 
to 90. Now that we filled out the hitting the ball function for player 1, let's go to our main.cpp file and type in just below player 1, player 1 dot hitting the ball and this will call the hitting the ball function every time our game loop loops. Let's go and compile the program and see what happens. So we've got our pong game like before and when we press spacebar we spawn the ball and it will collide with player 1's paddle. Let's do the same for player 2. So going to player2.cpp, let's go int hitting the ball, aim close parentheses into a semicolon, and then in player2.cpp we want to put in the hitting the ball function, so we can just take hitting the ball from player 1, I'm going into player 2 and copy and pasting the hitting the ball function. Now all we need to do is swap player 1 for player 2. So highlight the text and this is a quick and easy way to change um, certain patches of text from one to another. Let's hit control F and this will bring up a box called find and replace. Go to quick replace and type in what we want to change. So player 1 and replace with player 2. And then go down to the bottom and click replace all. It will say 7 occurrence replaced. Exit out of that and you'll see all of the player 2's have been changed from player 1. Make sure to change player 1 to player 2 here. And we need to go and define ball ID. So let's go to the top. Define ball ID 4. And then we need to go and change the angles at which it rebounds at. So if the if statements are true, instead of just rebounding at the same angle, we need to rebound at the angle equivalent for player 2. So instead of these, we want to rebound at these. Um, let's start off with if it's dead center, which is 270. Let's go to our pong, and where it says equal, change it to 270. And then if player 2 is greater than ball ID, we want to change it to 315. And then if it's less than the Y coordinate of the ball, we want it to rotate at 225. So change 135 to 225. Now let's go and compile the program and see what happens. We've got our two paddles. If we press spacebar, it will rebound off both paddles until one of us moves. So it's below and then it rebounds at a different angle. At the moment, if it hits the top wall or the bottom wall, all it does is go straight through. Let's go and change that. So going to our ball.h, we can see that the collision has already been declared, so all we need to do is define the function and put in all the equivalent code. So just below goal check in ball.cpp, let's write the function int ball two colons collision two brackets and return zero in here we want to see if the balls collided with either the top wall or the bottom wall so let's write a if statement for each if db sprite collision open parentheses ball id comma and then let's find out the id for the top wall so going to our main.cpp we can see that the top wall is 10. So put 10, close parentheses and do two equal signs and a 1. And then do another if statement exactly like that, but instead of the top wall, put in the ID for the bottom wall. So going to main.cpp, you can see line that runs left to right at the bottom, which is 13. So going to ball.cpp, change 10 to 13. Okay, in here we're going to put what happens when the ball collides. I mean, uh, there's only two possible angles that the ball's going to hit the top wall or the bottom wall, which is for the top wall is 45 or 315, and the bottom wall is 135 or 225. So let's write an if statement for each of those. So going to our problem project, let's make another two if statements. If db right angle of ball ID so the ball's angle equals to 
and then if this is the top wall we want to check for 45 and 315 so let's go back and type in 45 close parentheses and do two brackets and then copy and paste that and then change 45 to 315 for the second one and then copy all of this into the bottom into the bottom wall and change 45 and 315 to the corresponding angles which is 225 and 135 so 225 and 135 in here all we want to do is change the ball's angle to rebound at the appropriate angle so for example if the ball hits the wall at 225 we want to rebound it at 315 or if the ball hits the wall at 45, we want it to rebound at 135. So let's go and fill in the gaps. So for 45, we want to rebound it at 135. So DB rotate sprite open parentheses ball ID comma and then in here we want to change it to 135 close parentheses and do a semicolon and then in here if it's 315 we want it to rotate to 225 if the ball hits the bottom wall at 225 so going this way we want it to rebound at 315 and if it hits it at 135 we want it to rebound at 45 so there's a couple of angles running around here but because we simplified it to only six angles we can do it fairly simply with just if statements so let's make sure collision runs every while loop so going back to main.cpp just below the other ball functions let's write ball dot collision semicolon now let's go and run the program and see what happens. The game is really coming together now and oh it's just a bit too big for my for the screen capture. So let's shrink it down so it's a bit distorted. And you can see that it bounces off the walls quite nicely and if I move the paddles it can bounce up or down and it bounces off the walls at the corresponding angles. The ones that we typed in. And if we lose the ball just press spacebar and it comes back and we can carry on playing. This is all the physics we're going to do for Pong and you can go ahead and add in extra little things like a score counter or the easter egg where the ball changes colour or um, making the paddles move left and right as well as up and down and stuff like that. You can be really creative with these kind of games and add in your own opinion on what can make Pong the next best game um, yeah, it is quite a fun game to play even though it's very very simple. I um, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you've learnt a lot. Bye bye.